the devotees had brought various food offerings for the master and placed them in front of him. Sri Ramakrishna put a grain on his tongue and gave the plate to Surendra. He asked Surendra to distribute the prashad to the devotees. Surendra went downstairs with the offerings. Master, to Kedar. You had better go downstairs and explain it all to Surendra. See that they don't get into any hot arguments. M was fanning Sri Ramakrishna. The master said to him, Won't you eat anything? He sent M downstairs. It was about dusk. Girish and M were strolling near the small reservoir in the garden. Girish I understand that you are writing something about the master. Is it true? Footnote After Sri Ramakrishna's death, M published his notes of conversations with the master in five volumes. The Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna is an English translation of these books from the original Bengali. Footnote ends. M. Who told you that? Girish. I have heard about it. Will you give it to me? M. No, I won't part with it unless I feel it is right to do so. I am writing it for myself, not for others. Girish What do you mean? M You may get it when I die. It was evening. A lamp was lighted in the master's room. Omrito Bosu, a Brahmo devotee, came in. Sri Ramakrishna had expressed his eagerness to see him. M and a few other devotees were there. A garland of jasmine lay in front of the master on a plantain leaf. There was perfect silence in the room. A great yogi seemed to be silently communing with God. Every now and then, the master lifted the garland a little, as if he wanted to put it around his neck. Omrito Tenderly. Shall I put it around your neck? Sri Ramakrishna accepted the garland. He had a long conversation with Omrito. When the latter was about to take his leave, the master said, Come again. Omrito Yes, sir. I like to come very much. But I live at a great distance. So I cannot always come. Master, do come and take the carriage higher from here. The devotees were amazed at the master's tender love for Umbrito.
The next day, M came to the garden house, accompanied by his wife and a son. The boy was seven years old. It was at the master's request that he brought his wife, who was almost mad with grief, owing to the death of one of her sons. That day, the master several times allowed M's wife the privilege of waiting on him. Her welfare seemed to occupy his attention a great deal. In the evening, the Holy Mother came to the master's room to feed him. M's wife accompanied her with a lamp. The master tenderly asked her many questions about her household. He requested her to come again to the garden house and spend a few days with the Holy Mother, not forgetting to ask her to bring her baby daughter. When the master had finished his meal, M's wife removed the plates. He chatted with her a few minutes. About nine o'clock in the evening, Sri Ramakrishna was seated in his room with the devotees. He had a garland of flowers around his neck. He told M that he had requested his wife to spend a few days at the garden house with the Holy Mother. His kindness touched M's heart. M was fanning him. The master took the garland from his neck and said something to himself. Then, in a very benign mood, he gave the garland to M.